here with the mic. <laughs> huh? I said, what's the matter? And, what? Uh -huh. And some of y'all jump up like y'all wanted to fight, and I just hit you the mic again, sit down. No, I wouldn't do that twice, maybe. Amen. So for your reading, let's jump into the word of God. Like I said, God has something for us in this season. Uh, 1 John 4 and 1. 1 John 4 and 1 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Now, I'm going to stop for a second, I'm gonna, because I'm going to bring this into context for you um, uh, of, of the message that God downloaded into my spirit. And when we talk about this, a lot of times we talk about false teachers, and there are false teachers out there. And the scripture in its original context really is talking about false teachers, uh, preachers out there preaching false doctrines. Uh, but I'm here to tell you that the enemy, a man, is a false teacher and a false prophet. And he will whisper in your ear things that he wants you to believe that aren't true. It is not just about the, whether the word of God is true or not. Of course, he's going to whisper about that. But sometimes he'll whisper in your ear that people are talking about you. Sometimes he will whisper in your ear that you're sick and you're dying. Sometimes he'll whisper in your ear uh, that you will always be lonely. You will never have anybody. He'll whisper in your ear sometimes that you're wasting your time going to church. That prayer didn't do anything. Some of the devil's going to try to tell you that when you walk out of here. All that praying we did and, and hell still opened its gates. Well, yeah, trust me on this. The devil is mad because the people of God are waking up. Amen. Amen. He's been trying to, come on, that's all right. That's it. He's been trying to woo us to sleep for so long for so long and he's been so successful in many cases uh, putting people to sleep that he thinks he has a right to do so but we are jerking that chain and letting him know he has no more control amen so the book of John the eighth chapter this is not first John but the book of John st. John the eighth chapter verse 44 says this ye are of your father the devil and the lust of your father ye will do the enemy desires to sow into us things that are not of God. He wants us to believe things and walk in things that are not of God. So he sows into that because he'll attack what? The lust of our fathers. What do we mean by the lust of our fathers? The things that our fathers winked at in days of old have become the norm for us. So we're, we're like, that's the way it's supposed to be. That's why some of your families, can I talk to the church, and uh, your loved ones who really don't understand, they, they will say that you're wasting your time with all that church stuff. And they'll begin to speak into you and they'll begin to feel a little something and feel a little, little certain kind of way about things and about the church people. Because the enemy wants to build up on the lusts of the fathers. But the Bible says that he was a murderer from the beginning. Uh, now, now that, that, that's a quandary for me because when was the beginning? Huh? While he was in heaven, was he still trying to murder the, the angels up there? Was he already preparing to murder mankind? He was a murderer from the beginning. The Bible said, and abode not in the truth. Didn't stay in the truth, didn't live in the truth. That's why the enemy hates truth. He hates truth. He wants you to believe what? A lie. The reason he hates the truth the most is because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh what? Of his own. For he is a liar and he is the father of it. Today, I'm going to talk to you, and I'm going to give you a little snazzy uh, title so you can remember it. Don't believe the lies. Don't believe the lies. The season that we're in right now, I was talking to the brothers earlier, and I said, the Antichrist, plural, anyone who doesn't believe in Jesus Christ is considered to be an Antichrist. 
Christ. Now that's offensive to a lot of people and because they don't want to be uh, associated with the end time and the Antichrist himself. But uh, there are many Antichrists in the world today and the antichrist during this season pulled themselves together and trust me they have not they have been praying amen all season long to accumulate a time such as right now in this season when that unholy ween is about to take place they're coming together and they're coming the witches are getting their brooms together come on somebody the the the, the satanists are getting their pitchforks together and now I know I know that's just metaphorically because uh, amen that's just the way they portray them in Hollywood or whatnot but I just want you to know that they are getting their chants and their uh, their, their, their cantations together and uh, and they're, they're preparing and they're getting bolder each and every day and because the church has not been who they should be the enemy has any Crouched and he's began to preach to the people of God all manners of lies and deceit. Yes. But I'm here to tell you right now, you're not so important that everybody's talking about you. The devil just wants to take your molehill uh, and turn it into a mountain. Uh, the enemy is trying to build up a case uh, against the church uh, every time he causes you uh, to fall out with your brother and your sister. Can I tell you something? The lie that the devil told you that they don't like you, the church doesn't like you, the church doesn't care about you, that's a lie. Don't believe the lie. I'm not done with that one quite yet. But let me tell you something. If you believe that you don't like somebody in the church, that's a lie too. Don't believe the lie. That same spirit that ushered in the crucifixion of Christ. That same spirit that caused people who had seen their loved ones healed, seen them delivered, seen them raised from the dead, that same spirit that caused them to stand in the congregation and holler, crucify him, crucify him, is the same spirit that the enemy is trying to raise up in the church now. Devil, it's time out. You've been exposed. We're not going to believe your lie. that keeps speaking to you that uh, it's not worth it and that, that voice that keeps saying I've done everything I'm supposed to do but uh, it seems like nothing's getting better <laughs> have you looked around <laughs> have you been watching what's happening <laughs> can, you, can you hear me when I talk to you right now will you please whatever you do would you please keep the babes in Christ lifted up because the wolf is looking around for whom he can devour and that's why amen all of a sudden people who used to believe now have a big question mark They don't know any better. They don't, they can't discern the difference from the voice of God and the voice of the devil. Yet they haven't quite grasped hold to it. So there they are being attacked on all sides while we look at them and said, there they go. No, we ought to be saying, devil, lose your hold. The enemy wants to sift us as wheat. Uh, he's looking for something siftable. <sighs> he's looking for something that's not quite strong enough. And uh, if I can just get in there, but let me, uh, it's easy. Wait a minute, hold on. It's easy to talk about the weak ones. But the other side of the coin is those who consider themselves to be strong and solid who feel that the enemy can't make them act like that either 
the enemy will whisper in your ear just like he'll whisper in their ear but you have to be prayed up enough and understand that your years of being saved amount to nothing if you don't recognize the voice of God try the spirit Well, they're leaders. They shouldn't shut your mouth. Huh? If they're not right, or slipping up, they might be, no matter of fact, they are under attack. Or maybe you're under attack, and when you look at them, you're seeing something that the enemy has told you to look for. Can I help you with that? The devil knows where the kink in your armor is. He knows. Come on, church. Don't, 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 don't get too quiet on me. He knows where your weakness is. And when he begins to hit on you, he's not going to hit on your strong points. He's going to hit in your weak places. For all you to feel lonely and like uh, there'll never be Mr. Right or Mrs. Right in your life. Let me stop the bus right here and tell you something. Uh, you can't find Mr. or Mrs. Right uh, looking at the wrong places. You better lock in with God and, and let God do the looking for you. <laughs> Don't believe the lie. Don't believe it. And don't believe your Pentecostal padding is okay. You play with fire, you burn in hell. I'm trying to help somebody right now. Stop believing the lie. You're going to save them by holding their hand? No, you're not. You're going to save them by kissing them? No, you're not. You're going to save them, hey amen, by going places and hanging out? No, you're not. The only way they're going to get saved is on the altar. And before you worry about, can I talk to the people of this church right now? Don't believe the lie. Yeah. The Bible goes on to tell us that in 2 Corinthians uh, 10 and 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not what? Carnal. They're not carnal, but they're mighty. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Carnal, carnal is what the world and what the enemy uses. Uh, do you understand me? Uh, I can't beat the devil playing the devil's game on his terms. The rules are set up for me to fail. So I can't get involved of the things of the world trying to defeat the devil. No, I've got to remain what God called me to be. I've got to stay separated. I got to stay cleansed from the world. I got to make sure that I'm holy and acceptable unto the Lord our God. I've got to do that. And by doing that, and by bending my knees, and by calling on the name of Jesus, my weapons are now mighty. Because what I thought was strong isn't strong at all. But when I go in the name of the Lord, little David, a ruddy little boy, didn't have a whole lot of muscles. But what he had was the name of the Lord. And when he came after him, amen, a bear or a lion or a giant with a smooth stone, it wasn't because he was such a good shot. It was because he had God on his side. Stop believing the lie that you can fix it. Let God fix it. So through the spirit, we're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. What is a stronghold? It's something that has a stronghold against you. So when somebody is looking at you and rolling their eyes, 
instead of saying they have a bad attitude and they don't like me you start praying God could you bless them they got an eyelash in their eye could you start praying God I know the devil is telling me that they're doing that to me but God you already let me know I'm not that important for them to constantly be thinking about me every time they see me God and if that is the case God help me to love them help me to reach out to them help me to pray for them why because I don't want to believe the lie The Bible says that when we pull down those strongholds, we cast down imaginations. Why imaginations? Why would that be in there? Because that's the playground of the enemy. He will have you imagining things. And you're, come on, you're already getting riled up in your flesh. Already ready to walk out the door. Already ready to curse somebody out. Already ready, amen, to go back to what you were doing. Already ready to, to, to click on that number that you haven't deleted yet. Already ready to go back to the joint. To go back to the bottle. To go back to the mess. To go back to the club. Already ready to do those things. Because the enemy said, church ain't working anyhow. And, and the people are hypocrites. Baby, go to the club. There's a whole room of hypocrites. I don't hear nobody saying that. I don't hear nobody saying that they're hypocrites in the club. I don't hear nobody saying that they're hypocrites in school. I don't hear nobody saying that they're hypocrites on your job. And you'll never quit that. Get in the church. Be the difference. Don't. Believe the lie. Stop letting the devil play with your imaginations. Those heidi thoughts and those things that exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bring it to captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. The enemy hates the truth therefore he is a lie let me back up before I move too quick because I'm about to get into the, 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 the meat of the matter but let me move back for a minute when somebody says that I don't love them huh then we have to go back to the Word of God and God says God is love and he that loveth not knoweth not God. So I can't turn my back on my brethren, even if they turn their back on me. I can't respond to a negative remark that they throw at me. I can't believe the lie. I saw them speak in tongues. I was witness when they got baptized in Jesus' name. I know that's not them, but that's the enemy trying to make me believe a lie. Yes. I'm not going to be part of it. Luke, just in case you thought you were grateful, or great, or powerful, and mighty. The fourth chapter, verse 1. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, I'm talking to you Holy Ghost filled people, and if you ain't got it, you ain't got it. And you better get it before you leave this world, because it is the resurrection power, and you will not resurrect without it. Did I say that? Yes, because I'm tired of people believing the lie. Hmm? If it took the Holy Ghost to raise Jesus, <laughs> Oh, I know we just so so powerful nowadays and so so theologized and got so much knowledge and wisdom of the world, by the way, that we don't need God anymore. We've become God. And everybody's going to heaven. The devil is a lie. Hell is getting bigger. I haven't read one scripture where heaven was getting any larger. And Jesus being filled of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Being 40 days, watch this. We know he fasted for 40 days, but the Bible says being 40 days tempted of the devil. 
You think your little storm is something? <laughs> Satan himself is on assignment right here in this scripture. And for 40 days, 40 day fast, every day, day one, the devil's there messing with him. Day two, the devil's there messing with him. In the middle of your fast, the devil is messing with you. So you're trying to be as spiritual as you can be. Do you think the devil takes a day off? No, he does not. But it's not what the devil does. It's us recognizing the lie that he has no power or authority and all the junk that he tries to put into your mind and all the garbage that he tries to spew into you. You have to make your mind up and say, I, I, I can't. you can keep talking, but I'm going to keep walking. You can, you can keep on doing what you're doing, but I, I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep fasting. I'm going to keep working for the Lord. I'm not going to let go. I'm going to keep, matter of fact, I'm going to be a little bit earlier to church next day. You devil, you mess with me. Watch this. I'm going to pray a little longer now. Devil, you just mess with me again? Guess what? I'm going to go pray somebody through to the Holy Ghost. Devil, you mess with me? I'm about to go hand out some seed cards and hang some door hangers and invite some people. Keep messing with me. For well, the kingdom of God is what I'm about. I don't know about nothing else, but I do know Christ crucified. Jesus being tempted uh, for 40 days of the devil. And in those days, he didn't eat nothing. And when they were ended, watch this, he afterward hungered. Now watch that. That's, a, that's an amazing statement. For 40 days, he went through. But when it was over, he was hungry. Now watch this. Watch this. I know that's simple. Watch this. Some of y'all said he was hungry on day one. No, some of y'all said you'd be hungry on hour one. <laughs> <laughs> but when it ended watch this the flesh began to speak <laughs> I'm not catching this. Jesus was 100% God <laughs> but yet 100% flesh and when it was over the flesh said oh it's my turn now <laughs> so the Bible said he hungered but what took place <laughs> Oh, pay close attention. Is the devil said for 40 days you walked in the spirit for 40 days you dedicated your life to God for 40 days you were praying and fasting and tearing down flesh but on 41 the flesh began to rise up and here comes oh Satan Sniffing, I see a kink in the armor. But somebody better understand this that your 40 days, amen, doing the will of God did not make you weak, it made you stronger. But even though the flesh is trying to rise up, you gotta know how to put the flesh back in its place. And the devil said unto him, Huh? If thou be. <laughs> Come on. Now, yeah, he, he, his is interesting because a lot of people say he had no clue who he was messing with when he crucified him. However, here, the scripture says that Satan said to him, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones that it be made bread. Now, Jesus not coming down off the mount yet, his flesh was hungry. So how do you think the enemy attacked him? Stomach growling? Huh? Belly button rubbing up against his backbone? So the devil didn't come up to him and say, hey man, you want a new camel? You need a new pair of shoes? He says, I see the weakness in you. And right now, your flesh is so hungry. I figure I can sell you something that I couldn't sell to you before. <laughs> so go ahead, let me help you out. I know who you think you are. And if you really him, here's some stones. Go ahead and, uh, y'all don't think he could do it? He turned water into wine. He, he, he took a little kid's lunch and fed 5,000 men and their children and wives. You don't think he could do it? How huh? he spoke the world into existence. You don't think he could have done it? The power was there. 
But Jesus looked up and said, there's something inside of me that has to speak for me. Because if I let my flesh speak, my flesh is going to bake me some bread. But I've got to let what's in me begin to speak. And he brought out the word of God and said, it is written <laughs> that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. What? of God you can have that natural bread I've got the spiritual bread stop listening to the devil don't believe the lie You've gone as far as you could go. No, baby, you're just getting started. The devil told you to stop. God's telling you, keep going. And when the enemy says stop, you need to say no. The Bible says for me to press. And the devil thought he could have got him on number two here. And the devil said unto him, this time... He said he took him into a high mountain. Now watch this. We used to sing a song, don't let the devil ride. If you let him ride, he's going to want to drive. But here the scripture says that the devil took him huh, into a what? High mountain. And showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Now watch this. Now he took him, I don't care how high you get you can't see the other side of the world. But he took him to a high mountain and showed him every kingdom on planet Earth. Watch this. Well, you don't think the devil's got a lie for you? You don't think he's cunning? He'll show you all manner of stuff that's a lie. Watch this. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee. <laughs> And the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will give it. If thou, if thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Now here is where it kind of contradicts what I said before. Because if he knew he was talking to God in the flesh, he would never try to offer him what he doesn't know. <laughs> Jesus, like some of us now, now hold on, some of us would see that job. We'd see that money. <laughs> We'd see that position. Huh. We'd see that house. We'd see that car. We'd see that date. Huh? If you just do this, if you just do this, I'll give you everything. There's some people in Hollywood right now that wish they could back out of that deal they made. There's some politicians out there that wish they could back out of that deal they made. There's some of you in here that are saying, I better back out of that deal right now. Yes. <laughs> and Jesus answered and said unto him, get thee where? Behind me, Satan, for it is what? Because when you let the word that Holy Ghost in you begin to speak versus you speaking. Because I'm here to tell you that some of us have, have been tempted. You've driven by those signs up there with, where it says Powerball. Mega millions. They put them on your way home. Huh? And you looking at your bills and you see that. Woo -wee, one dollar would help me, my Lord. Hmm. And I know what you said. I'll just pay the church off. Really? You got 500 million. You're going to pay the church off. That's all you're going to do. <laughs> yeah, I'm just 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 messing with y'all. All right. My point is this. The enemy will show you all manners of things and he'll get you to buy into things. Right. But that on the inside ought to be that which comes up and speaks. It is said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Sorry, I went ahead of myself. Now I can hold on. I went ahead of myself. It is written, thou shalt not worship the Lord 
thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. In other words, I'm not going to bow down to the pressures of the world. Peer pressure will not hold me. <sighs> mm -mm. That stuff is not going to draw me. That stuff is not going to cause me to want to go the wrong way. This stuff is not going to entice me. I'm not going to be enticed by it. You can't, you can't give me more stuff to make, to make me take less God. There's no compromise in my DNA. But preach it don't take all that anymore. No, not for you. But for the people of God it does. And then he brings him to Jerusalem because he, he tried with all the world. And he, he tried addressing his hunger. Right. But then he began to deal with his passion. The people of God. So he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple. Now, now this is the irony of ironies. He set him on the top of the temple, not knowing that he already has a reserve, uh, a reserved seat in the temple. As a matter of fact, because he's in all places at all time, I can see God looking up and saying, yeah, you got me up there, but I'm already here. Where you can't come, I met. <laughs> so he set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if thou be the son of God, again, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Saying, it's written that God's going to protect you, baby. You, nothing bad's going to ever happen to you. Obviously, the liar was trying to hide the fact that there was a crucifixion coming. Huh? And so that's when Jesus came back and told him, it is said that thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. In other words, I ain't going to play for that. I'm not going to fall for that foolishness. I'm not going to hear that lie. First of all, you in my house trying to give me my house. Second of all, if I go back, you was in my world that I created trying to give me my world. Third, you was in a place where you were trying to feed me some bread when I am the bread of life. Stop listening to the devil. He's a liar. I'm almost done, y'all. Y'all can hang up. Just hang on just a few more minutes. I'll get you out of here. Psalms 51 and 10. Isn't this what we should be praying right now? Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. And watch this. Watch this. Here's, here's the problem we have. Fix him, God. But we have an issue with this part. Fix me. We struggle with the fix me. I need you to fix me. I'm always looking at them. I'm always trying to look at the beam when the moat. I'm looking at their problem, but not my problem. I'm all, I can always find their sin, but I cannot well hide mine. Mm. <laughs> Created me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Because if I don't get my heart right, <laughs> if my spirit ain't right, there's going to be some casting away. And God, whatever you do, there's going to come a sound of that last trump. Don't take thy Holy Spirit from me. God, can you do me a favor? Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy, with thy free, free, freely given, free spirit. Y'all okay with that? Now stand, I'm going to read a little something to you that's some, something that I didn't write, but I'm going to read it to you. Because the enemy in this season is trying his best to wipe you out. Not just you, me. Right? He's trying to wipe you out. So before I go any further, would you lay your hand on your head? And would you begin to pray to God, God, take doubt out of my mind. 
Take anger out of my mind. God, replace it with the same mind that was in you. For on my own, I can do nothing. I'm miserable. I'm wretched. And I'm undone. But in you, I'm more than a conqueror. But in you, I'm greater than anything that ever could come against me. In you, I'm a royal priesthood. I'm a holy nation. I'm a city that sits upon a hill whose light cannot be hid. God, in you, I can succeed. Now, we're battling something. And we know the scripture says the battle is not ours, it's the Lord's. But while we're here on earth, we've got to fight this flesh. Now, like I said, this is not something that I wrote. This is just something that I read. There was a minute missionary in the jungles of New Guinea. And he sent a letter home to his friends. Are y'all with me? Amen, 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 amen. He sent a letter home to his friends. And he began to tell them that he was in the thick of things. He was fighting for his life, not naturally, but spiritually. He said, it is good to be in the thickness of the fight. However, in his writing, he said, when you're doing something and making an impact, the enemy will bring out his heaviest guns. He will try to make you depressed, discouraged. He'll have people slander you. He'll try to bring disease on your body. <laughs> he doesn't waste time on the lukewarm bunch. When he hits, he hits good and hard. This is the part that I like the best. You can always measure the weight of your blow by the one you get back. When you're on your back with fever, the last ounce of your strength, when some of your converts backslide, when you learn that your most promising inquiries, the people that you sold into the most, are only playing around. When your mail gets held up, talking about your financial blessings. And when you're calling folks and they don't even bother to answer. It's that time to put on your mourning, question mark. Sorry, I, mis I misread that. Is that the time to put on your mourning? No, sir. That's the time to pull out all the stops. And to get in a corner somewhere or out on a city block, wherever, and begin to shout hallelujah. The old devil is getting it, amen, in the neck and hitting back. Heaven is leaning over the battlefield, watch this, and watching. <laughs> Wondering, will we stick with it or will we back down? But somebody made their mind up. And said, it doesn't matter whether I have a lot of resources. It doesn't matter if everybody's on my team. It doesn't matter whether or not it looks like I'm failing or it's impossible. Somebody made their mind up and said, glory to God. We're not going to run away. We're going to stand and we're going to fight. Do I have somebody in this place right now? That says, I know the battle is the Lord's, but it hasn't felt like it. It felt like I've been being defeated. It felt like I've been getting beat down. Well, that's the lie of the devil. Don't you believe the lie? Greater is he. Why don't you make your way to this altar? Let's pray as a family. Lift your hands. Come on, in the name of Jesus, would you lift your hands? 
we're not going to rush this thing today I know it's late I know you've got things to do come on we're pulling out our weapons because our weapons huh? come on they're not carnal but they're spiritual come on I want some soldiers right now that have made up their mind they're going to slay every lie that the enemy is speaking into the minds of the members come on don't wait for me to pray for you right now you ought to be praying for yourself and one another come on in the name of Jesus God there's only one voice that the people of God should obey amen and that's your voice a stranger we should not follow God I pray right now God that you would help us pull down every vain imagination God that you would help us amen to reject and rebuke every ungodly word of advice God I'm praying right now for the least to the greatest from the patio to the pulpit I'm praying God amen for the people of God all over this world every nation that's under God every nation of people every ethnicity every person where Wherever they're walking or whatever they're walking in God that you would draw them in before it's too late for the one who is distressed and feeling like giving up I pray right now for a double dose amen of holy zeal but this time give them zeal according to knowledge I pray God over this body of people Lord with all authority that we will not get out of the fight we are not those people who are just defending the faith but we're those who are offensive against every lie perpetrated by the enemy God in the name of Jesus just like when you went on the offense going down to hell and snatching the keys amen from the enemy so we stand today with the same same mindset we will not be defeated we will not take down we will not bow and we will not bend unto the whims of the enemy we stand affirmed we stand sure God I pray as I've been praying for a season God would you please Lord build up a hedge around the minds of our people block their eyes from ungodly things block their ears from ungodly things God I pray oh Lord that thy will be done that we stand dear God firm and assured knowing God that you're the author and the finisher of our faith and if it ever gets too heavy God your burden is light God if we feel like we don't know which way to go your yoke is easy God let us learn to lean and depend on you and whatever you do don't let us believe the lie. Don't let us believe the lie. Now, if you feel God in this place and you're not in a hurry, would you find you a prayer partner? And would you begin to pray? Would you begin to pray not like a weakling? Well, I haven't been saved that long. I didn't ask you to give me your resume. If you've been saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, would you find a prayer partner? And would you begin to pray and begin to proclaim the power of God together? Something about us coming together. Something about us touching and agreeing. Something about us being on one accord. Amen. That the enemy hates it. Come on, somebody needs to find somebody even to pray with the more that you've had a falling out with. Oh yeah, I did put you on the spot. If you've been struggling, amen, you need to find somebody.